welcome. Today, we're going to talk about an exciting product that I love. If you are going to be handling logs in large quantities and sending stuff in, I highly recommend you take a look at Cribble. It is an amazing product. Um, it integrates great with Splunk. It integrates with lots and lots of different products. But since this is primarily focused around Splunk, I'm going to focus a lot more on that piece. But it basically works as a heavy forwarder in the Splunk environment. You can send logs to it, and it can parse and manage those logs for you. I'm going to show first how to set the system up, just kind of giving a brief overview. This is Cribble. You log in. Um, you'll go in on port 9000, and you agreed with this page. The print with Splunk, is, I mean with Cribble, is that you're going to have sources coming in. Sources are where do the data originate. So in my environment, I'm going to have stuff coming from my Splunk universal forwarders and things like that. And so I, I will, that will be my source. And then I can choose where I want to send that destination. I can pipe the stuff off. I can send it to an S3 server. I can send it to my Splunk instance. I can send it off to uh, whatever. I can send it to um, elk, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and it's so easy. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to come in and you're going to say, hey, I want a data source. You come in here. These are all the different sources you can get data from. You can get Azure blogs, file system collectors, REST APIs, um, AppScope TCP dumps, Elasticsearch, TCP JSON, Datadog, Windows Event Forwarder. Um, you can pull from these different systems. I'm not going to cover I, I couldn't cover half of these things, but it's just, it's really, really powerful. And so I'm just going to show you how easy it is to set up your, uh, to receive Splunk input. I, I already have one set up, so I'll just show you what I did. I'm just going to click this little box, Splunk TCP. I will edit the first option there. I can choose what IP addresses are allowed to send to me on, by default, I left it as 000. If you remember, Splunk listens for data coming in on port 9997. So you just set yourself up to listen on port 997. And you, can, you are really set. You can make other settings here. But in its most simple format, that's all you've got to do. And now your system is acting like a Splunk heavy forwarder or a Splunk indexer. It's not going to be an indexer because it's clearly it's not going to actually index your data. But if you've ever sent stuff to an indexer or sent stuff to a heavy forwarder, this is now configured just to be just like them. And you send it on its way. And then the next set you do, you, you want to set your destination. And look at all the different destinations options you have. I mean, the possibilities are just astounding. It's just and it's it's just that click. I love DevNull. That's the my, one of my favorites. Just send it to the oblivion. Get rid of some of these logs because there's a lot of logs you get sent by your systems you don't want. And so you can set rules and you can say, hey, I don't want that. One of my favorites that I found was Output Router. That's a really cool feature where you can set rules and say, hey, if the data is of this type, go to this machine and go to this machine. And if the rules are, if it has this kind of data, go here and here. And so it sets up multiple uh, different routing uh, routes for your data really really simple but let's just to keep it real simple here i'm going to send it to a single splunk instance if i was at a load balancer i just use this one point to load balancer but in my case i'm i got a single splunk instance i put it in i say what address am i sending it to what port and what do you do if you get too much back pressure and I chose block, but there's lots of things. You can do a persistent queue, keep it back, uh, things like that. It's just, and boom, you have your data going straight into Splunk. And you've got yourself set up with a source and a destination. It's just that simple, and all of a sudden the system works. I, um, I'm going to turn in for other videos as I explain data routes and how to modify your data. But I just wanted to give you a real brief overview. Um, let me just do this while I've got it. I'll, I'll combine these into two videos. It's got suite monitoring. You can see immediately the events in and the events out. And honestly, there is a difference. Um, if you are doing something, you're dropping, you're dropping logs intentionally. There are logs you don't want to go through. You can see, all right, I'm bringing in 17.72 thousand alerts. 
events, and I'm sending out this many. So you can see how much you've reduced your logs. Remember, you're paying for everything you're sending through your systems uh, to Splunk and things like that. So there's a there's reasons you want to reduce down those logs, and here's a really quick way of seeing what kind of reduction you're doing. You can see bytes in and bytes out. Here you'll actually notice I am actually receiving more bytes than I'm sending out because I'm tossing fields. I'm not just tossing, I can, to, can I just toss a bit? I can say, you know what, that field, it doesn't make any sense, it's redundant, it's not useful, get rid of it. And now I'm not sending that field on its way. Um, I can see how my system is doing with how much free memory, any CPU, how, how full, what kind of flow I'm running. I actually really like this beta view here I can see some what logs are going to my internal indexes on Splunk what are going to my ITSI metrics what are going to my Corelight logs metric my Linux logs my pfSense I have all these systems being logged and I can quickly see where they're going how much data is going through um, you can do some of these things on a heavy forwarder but it's just so much easier and it's all GUI. Um, I'm a big fan of the GUI. There's a time you want to get back and get your hands dirty, but this has more capabilities and is easier to use. And I hope you'll keep coming back to this channel. Uh, like and subscribe to this if this is interesting to you. And I'm going to keep showing you how to use Cribble. I'm going to talk about how you do routing. Routing is amazing because you set rules and you can see your data change as it goes. So I hope you'll uh, continue to watch the videos here on Cribble. This is an amazing product. I highly recommend anybody who takes log uh, collection serious that they uh, put a lot, uh, they put a Cribble instance in place. Uh, hope this helps you on your journey from becoming a lame analyst to a, uh, to an expert.